Welcome back, LHS, to your Blue Devil News. I'm Kimberly. And I'm Caleb. The Blue Devil Boutique will have its spring sale on April 3rd through 4th during lunchtime. It will be located in the hall in front of the cafeteria and the bank. We will be selling stylish, gently used clothing and accessories for men and women. Prices are from $1 to $12. Cash only and no credit cards are accepted. And all proceeds will go towards the class accounts. Are you missing a coat or sweatshirt? Several were turned in to Lost and Found this week. If you are missing anything, please stop by A100 to see if it's there. All juniors will take the ACT next week on April 2nd. All 9th and 10th graders will take practice ACT tests on this day as well. Calculators will not, I repeat, not be provided for 9th through 10th grade testing. Your testing room numbers will be posted on the lunchroom doors. Here is a video to help you better manage the ACT. A lot of you will be taking the ACT this Saturday, September 21st, or next month, October 26th. So I want to go over some strategies so you feel prepared for the test. As many of you know, on the ACT, I want you to answer every single question. So if the proctor says you have two minutes left, I want you to set aside time to put an answer on every single bubble in the whole Scantron sheet. They only count the ones you get right, so that's the, the blessing about the ACT. If you have trouble finishing any of your sections, you will get a better score if you go more carefully through three quarters of each section instead of rushing through the whole, the whole section and getting half of them wrong. I want to break it down by section here on how to adjust your time if you, don't, if you have trouble finishing each of the sections in time. So for the English, the grammar, it's the first section, there are 75 questions. If you can get through 60 of them, doesn't have to be the first 60, but just try getting 60 of them right, you will get a great score. Now, this could be where you need to skip some of the longer questions. Longer questions tend to be um, the order of sentences. They might have you rearrange the order of sentence one through five in a paragraph. That takes a while, so leave that one out. Uh, there's another one, it's usually the last question of every mini passage in the, in the grammar, it'll say, has the writer fulfilled his goal um, in you know, talking about the topic of the early stages of Tejano music and it's one of its main singers? And if you've kind of forgotten what the theme was, this is a good one to skip and move on to those short ones that just got, ask you about punctuation, a comma, a semicolon, or an apostrophe. With math, you have 60 problems. So instead of rushing through and missing half of them by doing careless errors, instead do make it a goal for doing 45 of the math problems well. Now, the first 30 math problems are more basic in general. I would say it's more 9th and 10th grade math. So a lot of people find that that's the easier part of the math section. However, many of you are going through a lot of the math that's the numbers 45 to 60. You're doing that in math class at school right now. So those are much easier for you. So I can't really say which 45 to do. So maybe it's the shorter ones. Skip the word problems, the ones that take too long. Every question's worth a point, so get your points as, as, as many as you can. With reading, you have four passages, each with ten questions. So instead of rushing through, it's very hard to finish four passages with 40 questions in 35 minutes. So instead, go through three of the passages more carefully. Maybe it's your favorite three, maybe it's the three that have the shortest questions. Um, you probably know that it starts with prose, goes into social science, then into humanities, and then into natural science. So if you favor the sciences, do you know make sure you do the two sciences plus one. Or if you think prose, you know, it's about a a story about a family, and there's not usually questions that say in line seven to ten. So if you have trouble retaining that information about a story, skip the first one, skip prose, and go to the other three. Basically, do well on three of them so that you can get closer to 30 points doing that. If you rush through four passages, getting five in each of the uh, passages wrong, that's 20 against you. So a 30 out of 40 is a much better score, much better score than a 20 out of 40 for reading. Similarly, 
science is 35 minute section as well. So you have seven experiments to do in 35 minutes, which you all know is a five minute experiment. A lot of these experiments have a lot to read. They have tables and graphs and keys and charts, often take up two pages. That's the hard part about ACT science is finishing in time. It's not usually the questions. The questions are pretty basic and they have you look at the table or look at the chart and see what's increasing under what temperature, what eggs hatch, that sort of thing. So the questions themselves and the tables are not that difficult to understand. It's just getting to all 40 questions. So for science, if you really have trouble finishing time in time, do five of them carefully and leave two out. If you, the best, the uh, much better score will be if you can get through six of the seven experiments well. A lot of my students like to skip the one, there's one experiment that doesn't have tables or graphs, so it's a lot more reading. So that tends to be what a lot of my students will do six experiments very well and skip that one without graphs. Now, of course, you're going to get the best uh, score if you can get through seven and do them all pretty well, but if you don't, if you have a lot of trouble finishing in time, maybe you have, you know, you, you could have used eight more minutes, then instead go carefully through three quarters of that science section. The essay, not everyone takes it, but I would advise taking it, uh, the test with the writing portion because most colleges in the nation do ask for that writing portion. So if you are taking the essay, it's a 30 minute essay. The goal is to write at least four paragraphs. That is an introduction with two body paragraphs and a conclusion. So if you can do that, that's fabulous. You'll usually get about an eight out of 12 for doing four solid paragraphs. If you have time to do five paragraphs, an intro and three body paragraphs, or an intro with two body paragraphs, you know, three body paragraphs supporting your argument, or an intro with two body paragraphs supporting your argument and one counterpoint, and then a conclusion, that's ideal. That's where you get your double digit score. Now, if you are looking at the clock and you're running out of time, it's much more important to finish that essay with a conclusion than it is to think about another example. The ACT graders are gonna take off more points if you don't allot you know, time enough to finish an essay by concluding it. So make sure if you're lo losing time, make sure you have time for the conclusion more than another example. All right, so I wish you luck this Saturday the 21st. Redo this video, go through strategies. It, practice makes perfect. If you can get through more practice tests, get more familiar with the sections, that's the better. Good luck. Any senior that is wanting to attend cosmetology school can apply for the Beauty Boutique Scholarship. This is a $1,000 scholarship that will be awarded only once. You must be a full-time freshman accepted to any cosmetology and or aesthetic program in the state of Tennessee. Qualifying students must be residents of Wilson County and full-time students at any Wilson County High School with a minimum 3.0 GPA. Please stop by room B323 or Ms. McNeil to get an application. Applications are due by April 18th. FCA has shirts for sale at the bank for $10. The freshman class has long sleeve shirts for $22 and short sleeve for $15. There are a few comfort shirts left for sale at the bank. They are $15. Let's see what our Blue Devil is revealing today. Doesn't you use a game that takes little time to baby you and it doesn't hold your hand? It's like those dads that say, I'm only going to tell you once, and you're on your own. The very first mission, you start off in a burning city, the last city, and you have to take out a literal army of enemies. All the while, you travel through a main area of the game, called the Tower, where all the vendors and stuff were. Now, the citizens have evacuated in our refuge with other guardians. With many bosses and a lot of damage dealt to you, this game is just getting started. All that you need to know about the story is that you're trying to reclaim the last city, the area where you started the game. You will have to go to three other celestial objects. Titan, a moon of Saturn, Io, a moon of Jupiter, and Nessus, an unknown planetoid that holds an old crushed spaceship from the 21st century. You play as a guardian, and you can choose between three classes to play. The Titan, the Hunter, and the Warlock. 
The Titan is a strong shield that is meant to ruin your day. Their melee abilities are definitely going to be a one-hit KO, and that's going to be fun when you get hit. Hit that shield. They can block all of your damage by summoning their own barrier meant to be a shield for them and their team. Through the Titan is meant to be up close and personal with you. The Hunter is meant to be up close and personal and far away at the same time. They can sneak behind your entire team and wipe you all out with one super and a grenade, but they take the least amount of bullets to take out. They have ranged melee abilities and one of their subclasses is a one hit flaming gun that can hold three or six bullets maximum depending on your sub subclass. Very fun. The Warlock is meant to take the supportive role, but they don't have to. The Warlock does have a bad melee, and I'm not going to be the only one to tell you that. But their abilities allow them to summon Rifts of Light that can either heal or damage boost their team. But they are not weak on their own. Their supers are devastating, since all of them are meant to blow you up, stab you, or turn you into toast. Each class has three subclasses, and each subclass has its own subclass. It's weird, I know. Destiny works on a rule of threes. Three classes, three subclasses, three sub-subclasses, and three weapon slots. You have an extra class ability, melee abilities, grenades, and a super ability that will have to recharge. Now, something really important are the damage types. There are four types. Kinetic, Void, Arc, and Solar. Kinetic is the basic damage type that no one is weak to. Void is a damage type that is called mysterious and unknown, but three enemies are weak to it. The Vex, the Taken, and the Scorn. Arc is the electrical one. It's basically meant to electrocute the enemies and is strong against the Fallen and the Hive. Solar is the one that's less used but more devastating. It's only strong against one enemy, the Cabal. Now there are exceptions for this rule, I'm just generalizing. But all of these are pretty even in power, so no type is stronger than the other. And in my opinion, Void is probably the best to use for the Titan, Solar is probably the best for this Hunter, and Arc is probably the best for the Warlock. To me, this is a great game. Not 10 out of 10, but probably like a 7 out of 10. The main problem with this game is how the leveling works. Basically, it locks you until you get all the DLC. But you can still have fun with other players in the multiplayer segment. I'm Dylan. This has been your Sword of Devil Review. Have a nice day, LHS. Did you know that Wilson County has a high school fishing team that is comprised of all high schools in the county? I certainly didn't. Well, congratulations to Brady Duncan and his fishing partner, Mason Huddleston, on their win Saturday at Percy Priest Lake in the South Central Tennessee Region Bass National High School Tournament. Well done, guys. Students, there are only a few days left to get your prom tickets. The deadline for purchasing tickets is this Friday, March 29th. Tickets can be purchased at the bank or online. Also, any student taking a non-LHS student to prom this year needs to pick up a permission slip at the bank. These must be completed and returned along with a copy of your guest photo ID by Friday, March 29th. Students can now sign up for the lip sync battle hosted by the Blue Devil Players on April 26th. There is a sign up sheet on the auditorium doors. Groups can be no more than five people. Cheer trials will be April 10th through the 12th in the small gym from 2.45 to 4.30. Packets can be picked up in B203. Well, that's all the news that we have for today, LHS. I'm Caleb. And I'm Kimberly. And this has been news to you from the white and blue.